Okay, everyone, we're uh, going to go ahead and get started here. Um, as always, thanks so much for being here for our seventh episode of Season 2 of Line Change. Uh, we're uh, excited to get uh, started here. We've got uh, two player guests, as always, joining uh, Coach Michael and myself. We've got Kevin Entma, goaltender, and then Sean Lynch forward. Let's uh, give a round of applause for these two gentlemen. Uh, the way the show is going to go is uh, I'm going to co- ask Coach Michael a few questions, and then I'm going to get to the gentleman to his right. Uh, and then I'm going to open the, the show up for discussion, questions, comments, concerns. Uh, you're all welcome to ask anything your heart desires. Um, the only thing we ask is that you do so into the crowd mic here. We're going to just pass this around for that segment of the show, and then we're going to just wrap it up by asking a few questions about the upcoming week that we have uh, this Friday and Saturday night against the Quad City Storm. Uh, Coach, the first thing I wanted to ask you was I wanted to touch on uh, this past Saturday night's game on home ice against Fayetteville. Um, I thought it was a, a great effort by our guys, really, from for the most part, from start to finish, outside of uh, roughly two minutes of the game on Saturday. Um, there was a, a massive momentum shift in Fayetteville's favor, um, really roughly at the midway point of the game, after the, the non-goal, the goal in which basically the entire arena thought it was in, on um, that shorthanded chance by Jimmy Soper. It got waved off. Um, there was just a this sense of kind of deflating uh, momentum in favor of Fayetteville. It felt like that was the moment in which uh, the tide really turned, and, and the marksman ended up scoring three goals in a minute and 37 seconds. Was there a drastic change uh, in mood on the bench uh, after that uh, goal was waved off? Um, yes. I didn't see the play. I don't know. I was blocked, so I don't know if that went in or not. But, mm. um, you know, like you said, shortly after we gave up those three goals, and Um, I think the biggest thing for me on that is we just have to be mentally stronger. I mean, that stuff happens all the time, whether it's penalties that shouldn't have been called or, I mean, we're at this level and it's a development for the refs and it is what it is and those calls are going to happen and I thought we didn't really respond as well, you know, mentally to kind of handle that. Um, So that that was just my thoughts on that whole sequence. Yeah, and I suppose I'll uh, set the record straight here while I can. I uh, spoke with Caleb Cameron about it. Uh, for those of you who didn't hear the Creek segment this past Monday morning, he talked it over with Jimmy Sober, who was the one who ended up taking the shot, and uh, Jimmy told him that it wasn't in the goal. It bounced off the inside of the left elbow. Very dis- uh, misleading. I thought it was in. Our DJ did as well, and it seemed like at least 90% of the crowd thought it was in too. Um, but if uh, Jimmy Soper saying it wasn't a goal, then it, <laughs> and he's the one who shot it, then it wasn't a goal. Um, just an unfortunate uh, turn of events there. But uh, still, I thought a good uh, battle by the, by the team, especially in the third period there and the comeback effort. Um, Coach, there have been a few recent signings and additions to the roster since our last show a couple of weeks ago. Um, Anton Lindstrom, who's here in, uh, in attendance tonight, uh, Alex D'Oliveira, and now Wojtek Zemlichka, Seems like if you're going for a theme here, it's uh, recruiting players who have difficult names to pronounce. But um, was there a what specifically, I guess, about these three guys caught your caught your eye and caught your attention? Um, with Anton, actually, Kev was the one that kind of recommended me to him. Um, they were together in Wheeling for camp, so I reached out uh, to Wheeling's coach as well as uh, Jordan Ruby, who's up there, and just kind of got their opinions on him. Um, and certainly kind of the way things were going, I thought, you know, he could provide a spark to our lineup. And, um, you know, the first game in Evansville, I know it's, he's been off from games for a bit. And I thought he did pretty well on the big ice up there, and he made some plays in the O zone. So um, it's just for him just kind of continuing to get better and, and improving. Um, for Alex, uh, I mean, he's just a simple guy. Uh, not the quickest feet, but he, he keeps things simple. He plays well in the D zone, and just you know, making a good first pass is really all I need out of him. So he's done that pretty well first weekend um, or, or Saturday. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. he couldn't play Friday, obviously, but um, that's just kind of what I'm looking for him moving forward. And then I'm gonna butcher. I'm just gonna call him Z. That's what I've been calling him because <laughs> I because I'm not I'm not saying it very well. Um, you know, but I remember him certainly. I played against him from my time here. Um, he was in. Mississippi, I think, or Roanoke. I can't remember if he was in Roanoke yet, but um, you know, he's a guy that is a puck moving D, good offensively, can join the run, uh, skates well. So, certainly a guy I kind of look to, you know, get us out of our end quick, make a good first pass, and, and kind of join in the rush a bit. Stathis, you're a countryman with him. Can you uh, kind of shed any light on how to pronounce his name? Okay, I'm not. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Not a chance. Not a chance. Okay. 
this is uh, this is one of the few moments where I really hate my job as the broadcaster, but it's going to be difficult on Friday night for sure. <laughs> no worries. Not your fault, Coach. I know we need some help. Um, Kevin, I'm going to uh, address this next question I have to you. Um, this is your first full season pro uh, after four years at Adrian College. Uh, you broke into the league a little bit uh, last season back in March after your college playing, playing career had ended. But uh, as a goaltender, what's it been like adjusting to the, uh, the grind of the pro lifestyle? Uh, I think the main thing is really the travel, I would say. Uh, at least in Adrian College, like, we would have travel. We'd get up uh, a day early, and it was always just Friday, Saturday games. But uh, just here, like, there's nights where you spend on the bus, which is a little different. And, uh, other than that, like, the hockey, it's a faster-paced game, uh, bigger bodies, everyone can play, and... Uh, I, pretty much that's all you really have to get used to. It's still the same game, 60 minutes, and my job is pretty easy. I just have to stop the puck. So, Yeah, well, that's uh, as easy as that might sound for you. That uh, doesn't really sound so easy, I think, for most people. Having uh, you know six ounces of vulcanized rubber fired at you for a living doesn't sound like too much fun, and uh, you've been doing it a lot. Uh, you're third in the league in uh, starts this season. Um, you're no stranger to that. When you are at Adrian College, you were the workhorse there as well. Um, do you have any secrets for, so I imagine you get some bruises along the way playing in all those games, having a puck flying at you. Any secrets for keeping your body in good shape and staying well conditioned? Uh, actually, one of my uh, other goalie buddies, I've been doing it with Lynch here as well, uh, our mobility workouts. I do those two times a week just to make sure like um, all the little muscles that are in your hips and knees uh, that they get attention to that you don't really would get from a normal workout. So I've been trying to pay attention to that. But like... Uh, with things like how they've been going, um, with the losses that have been coming, like it, the main thing is pretty much just uh, really staying true to what works for you. Like even though you might not be getting the results you want, like you still have to put in the work. You still have to go to practice every day, work hard, and still do those little things, even though you might not be getting the results that you want. Yeah, definitely. And uh, one thing that's kind of I think a unique sort of fun fact about you that you mentioned earlier this season was that you, when you go to golf, you can swing both ways um ambidextrous golfer yeah. have you ever attempted to you know when you're playing net have you ever attempted to catch with a right-handed glove no no i i, I wouldn't bother with that <laughs> why not <laughs> no i don't know even trying to shoot righty it's totally different swinging the club is kind of just uh right. grip it and rip it i would say but shooting a hockey puck it's a little more finesse i would say <laughs> Well, not for nothing, but when I was uh, broadcasting in juniors a few years ago, we had a left-handed player from Finland who was on a really bad slump, and the coach gave him a right-handed stick during warm-ups, and that turned around his slump, and he went on a big tear. So just throwing that out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, Sean, uh, next question's for you. Um, you uh, took a cross-check from behind a, a couple of weeks ago against Pensacola. Um, couldn't stay in the game, unfortunately, but... After uh, that game ended, you came right back, and you've been um, a pretty a huge con uh, contributor in the lineup, um, really start to finish, ever since you've come back from that bad cross-check. Uh, how's the recovery process been for you? It doesn't look like it's, it's too bad anymore. <laughs> no, uh, I think my face in the last week and a half has taken a worse beating than it ever has in my whole hockey career. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it just uh, wasn't too bad. I just kind of had to get a couple stitches, and so it didn't really alter my... Kind of on ice performance at all, but I um, feel pretty good right now. Now, you and uh, Coach Michael, you guys go way back. You uh, grew up playing together in New York. Um, talk about some of the ways in which your role has evolved since he's kind of taken over as the head coach and uh, how it's affected your game. Um, I think he just kind of knows the way I play the game. Um, back in uh, West Genesee, where we both played high school, we kind of played in the same style. Um, it was a defense-first mentality, just kind of in your face, just physical game. And, I mean, I grew up playing that all the way to college even. So um, I think he kind of knows what my game is about. Um, and I think I just kind of take it a step at a time, just keep getting better. Yeah. So, uh, Kevin, Sean, Coach, any of you are welcome to answer, but have you guys seen the new uh, Peanuts jerseys that you guys will be wearing on Saturday? I, I did yeah, see I them did on see Instagram. Those. What are your yeah. thoughts? I thought they are pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of my yeah. buddies sent me uh, the link on in Instagram. They said they like them a lot, so... I think Thanks, so, too. Got to give uh, props to Blair and to uh, OT Sports on the design because I think they look really sharp. Um, I'd put them in the top one or two in our league for the Peanuts jerseys. Pensacola's look pretty good as well. But um, we're definitely looking forward to wearing those. And we've had one jersey auction this season with the camo night. Um, did you guys enjoy wearing those? And Because uh, I know, Sean, you scored your first goal 
with the mayhem while wearing those jerseys. Uh, Kevin, you got a win. Um, those jerseys, how did they sell for you guys? Uh, mine was the right off the back, so I'm not mm-hmm. exactly sure what the how jersey that off works the back. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know how that works, but uh, yeah, I really like those jerseys a lot. They were mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Obviously, uh, doing those things is pretty cool. Like, um, I've never been on a team that you get those kind of promotion nights. So, I don't know, it's fun to be part of and kind of changes things up from something that could get a little stale of just showing up all the time. And, I don't know, adds a little flair to the game, I guess. For sure. Well, there should be plenty of flair this weekend. Again, it's going to be our, uh, our Grinch night on Friday and our Teddy Bear Toss night on Saturday. Uh, always a fun time, the Teddy Bear Toss night. Um, that's all the questions I have for the gentleman up here. Um, the floor is now yours. Any question you'd like to ask, uh, by all means, please do so. Again, the only thing we ask is that you uh, have this mic. Just wait till it reaches you. Uh, Sean, if I could trouble you to come pick it up here from the stage, appreciate it. Uh, now the floor is yours. Go right ahead, folks. You might as well keep it. Uh, so. One of the kind of changes that I imagine happened for you, Mike, uh, is being the one who's in charge of making the decision of when to switch out goalies mid-game. Mm-hmm. And you got to do that on Friday, unfortunately. Yes. But I was curious as to kind of going forward, what your thoughts are of when is the appropriate time to do that, if it's based on just you gave up this many goals on not enough shots, or it's we need to change up the energy, or some kind of combination. Or... Yeah, I don't think it's more of a statistical thing as much as a feeling. Um I think it's either, you know, a couple soft goals. Maybe the goaltender isn't sharp that night, or it could be a wake-up call to the team in the sense that we're not playing well enough right now, and that was kind of more the case um, up in Evansville. You know, it was only six shots, I think, but, you know, of those whatever three goals, like they were two-on-ones or breakaways, they were, they were grade-A chances. So, um, you know, going into that, that was my decision was just kind of as a wake-up call. That's why I did that and called the timeout at the same time. So. And kind of as a follow-up to that, uh, because we have Kevin here, um, I'm I'm sure you're going to say, you know, you never want to get pulled from the game. You always want to stay in and play. But recognizing that you're not always going to have that kind of say, when do you think from like a – if you were a coach when as a goalie, what would be a good time to kind of make that switch to be best for the goaltenders? Uh, I like to go – like what Mike said there. Like it's feel for the game. Uh, It doesn't matter. Like you could let in two – uh, bad goals and then it's time to get out or it's maybe five goals like it all depends on the momentum of the game if you have to get the guys going like that like it's really yeah like there's no right or wrong answer for it really so Uh, so one of the things I was noticing when I was looking up uh, kind of the hockey DB pages is uh, for Sean Lynch, your college record, uh, your first three years, wasn't like goals and assists and points wise, didn't look that great. And then senior season, boom, you're practically a point of game player. And I was curious as to what kind of, in your mind, switch made like that switch from being someone who didn't put the puck in the net as much to senior season, you're, you know, one of the leaders on offense for your team. Uh, I think one of the biggest things in that, um, just me staying healthy. Uh, the first three years, I know I was battling injuries at least once a season, just kind of carried on throughout the year. So I think going into my senior year, I really worked hard over the summer so I could stay healthy throughout the entire year, just battle through my stuff and kind of just stay on the ice. So I think being able to work through those and stay on the ice as much as I was uh, just helped me build confidence. And you know, I played with a couple really good players up there. Um, which helped a lot, so I just thought it was a good year for me. I had a couple of questions submitted from DJ Hayes, who's usually at our uh, Lion Chain shows. He wasn't able to make it uh, this week. Uh, He wanted to make sure that I asked them. Um, Coach, this first question's for you. Uh, The team has shown the ability to play good hockey for a majority of games this season, but is struggling to turn that into wins. Uh, what are some of the little things that need to improve in order to convert that ability to skate with uh, anyone in the league uh, and winning into winning games? Sorry about the way I worded that at the end there. <laughs> um, I think with this group right now, a lot of it's mental, to be honest with you. Um, 
like going off of Saturday's game, just that that no goal and then the immediate response of them going down and scoring and then us kind of having that five minute collapse. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and I think I said it after that game was just again it's ebbs and flows and there's highs and lows. Every period's not going to be great and every five minute stretch isn't going to be great. But we got to do a better job of you know bending and not breaking during those minutes. I think and I mean it's we're we're close. Um, you know. You go two for three on the power play Saturday, and you hold them 0 for six. Again, we got to stay out of the box a little bit more. And I, I did a lot of D zone today to kind of remedy, hopefully, some of those shortcomings. But um, I think it's just you know finding ways to tinker things that I think need to be adjusted, and then staying as positive as we can. You know, obviously the results aren't what we want right now, but I'm seeing you know gradual improvements in areas that I wanted to see. So um, you know whether that's roster changes going forward or you know system changes I, I think we're close it's just kind of sticking to it in my mind yeah and stemming off of that sort of uh i definitely have noticed a substantial uh, increase in the special teams in general but in particular the power play it's looked really good the past couple of games two power play goals in the third period on, on friday night and then two power play goals on on saturday night as well so the teams i think on four of its last six power plays has scored um, that's a streak that we haven't had in the past couple seasons here. Um, have you noticed any particular catalyst that's kind of uh, um, more so than anything else kind of caused that that increase? I don't know if there's necessarily <clears throat> necessarily a catalyst. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, I put, I mean, putting Cousineau kind of on on the wing instead of down low was a little bit. I think he scored in. He scored in uh, Evansville. He scored against Fayetteville. Was that him on that power play goal? Uh, yeah. Was Caesar? Um, okay. mm-hmm. Caesar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that I mean, those two seem to have a connection coming down their strong side. I think it's just more just simplifying things. I the immediate weeks, you know, when I got the job, I I broke down the uh, the power play into components in terms of um, you know coming down the strong side, shooting pucks, so moving the puck to the point, walking, and guys coming up and swinging. And I'm just trying to simplify. Because that's, I think we're at our best when we're simple, um, mm-hmm. and we try to get things complicated and convoluted. We get in trouble. So, I think just especially on the power play, we have guys that can shoot. Um, so just continue to, you know, make the simple pass and get pucks to the net. And I think we'll be all right. For sure. Yeah. Nothing from the Gormans, Cleetons. No questions? Quotas? <laughs> you guys are just being too polite, I guess, eh? I think, I think, I think a question that everybody has is um, how, far, how close are we to start winning? Because fans are, you know, getting, getting aggravated, you know. Right. I, think, I think, you know, getting rid of the coach was a step maybe in the right direction because that's where it starts. If you don't win, it starts at the top. Right. And I think we all like Leo and everything else, but if you're not winning, somebody's got to go. Right. And so I think that move, and we're turning to you, and so you're the only one that may can tell us when we're going to start winning. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm a, a guy that wants the instant gratification for sure. You know, I'm certainly not pleased with the results. I thought, you know, that first Friday was okay. We got outshot against Evansville pretty good and found a way to win, kind of thanks to the guy sitting next to me. But um, I don't know. I think we're close, in, in my opinion. Watching film and and um, kind of gut feeling of, of the way games have been going, obviously Friday was, you know, unacceptable. And I mentioned that to whoever was, you know, in the, in the box for the coaches meeting before the game Saturday. And, um, you know, Saturday was certainly a better effort, and it's just we have to be – it's got to be complete 60. And I think I've got some guys are bought in for the most part and some guys maybe less so. Um, and, you know, I, I made it clear that I'm not afraid to, to make changes frequently until I find something that I like. So, I mean, obviously, again, to go back, I want it now. Like that's – but I, I'm trying to understand, you know, for myself that – it may be a little slower than you know I want, but I'm seeing things that I like. So uh, I had to think. Uh, what about an assistant coach to help you? 
Yeah. Have you given uh, that any thought? Yeah, no, I, I have. It's it's just been uh, um, a crazy couple weeks, and um, I've mentioned before that I think it's more the day to day. It's honestly sometimes not even the hockey side of it. It's just kind of the day to day dealing with with everything, and then understanding I still have to do film, and I'm the one, you know, looking at trades or, or moving the roster around, and. And I got to think about systems, so I, I, I do need some help. I think a little bit. Um, I mean, I thought about it, and there's been some considerations kind of going around, and I've, I've sent some texts. So um, we'll, we'll kind of just see. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> you can hang on to it. Would you want a offensive assistant coach or defense? Which one you think would, you know, help you better yeah. work better with your yeah. Style? That's a good question. Um, I mean, I was more of a de- – I've got the defensive mindset, I think, a little bit more than the offensive, so maybe that side. Um, but I think, you know, something I'd be looking for is, is someone that thinks a little different than I do. Um, I don't want – I wouldn't want somebody that's like a, a yes, sir. You know what I mean? Just always agreeing and of the same taste. Um, I would want somebody that thinks a little bit different than me just so we could bounce ideas and – you know, come up with things together rather than, you know, staying in the same lane. So, um, so one of the things that I thought was uh, interesting is after Friday night's game, you guys have to get right back on the bus and drive all the way back here for another home game, which is pretty brutal in terms of travel, especially coming off of the game that happened on Friday. Uh, so I'm curious as to all of your takes on, how you try and reset after having that game, having to, you know, take that travel and then still be ready to go Saturday night. Um, for me, you know, my mindset was it, it was a new day. Um, again, I thought the whole the whole game Friday was unacceptable across the board, including myself. I could have been better in areas for sure. Um, and, you know, my approach with these guys Saturday was when we did pregame film, it was what is Fayetteville going to do and how do we, you know what I mean? What are their tendencies? And I felt no value in, you know, showing our shortcomings from, from Friday. So, Yeah, and from, like, a player's standpoint, too, like, uh, you know, you get on the bus after a game like that, everyone's pretty discouraged, right? And, um, like, you pretty much spend, like, maybe an hour talking about the game, like, seeing what other people think about it. And then after that, it's just back to work the next day like try to get some sleep get to the rank no one's really talking about that everyone just still has the the goal in mind uh, which is to get two points and like we're not too far from that like Fayetteville they're a top team and we came the next night and we are still ready to go like like if you took out those two minutes there and we would have been right back in the in the win column I think so yeah it's a it's a fine line but with that with that travel you know you just have to mediate it and Really just take it as it comes, I think. You kind of just got to think that, you know, every every team has to go through that at some point in the season. Um, can't just say, like, we're seven hours out. We got a road trip back home. Um, we got back at 7 a.m., so once we got back, you know, it was kind of like a just a normal game day feel. You got to get some sleep, get a good meal in you, um, try not to sit around too much because we didn't have time for a uh, pregame skate. But, yeah, I think you just got to put it behind you and just – look ahead to the next game and just kind of bear down on it. I imagine it was almost kind of beneficial to not have to dwell on a, a loss like that for an entire week and to just get right back at it the following night and have another chance. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it really is. I think so. Any other questions, guys? Uh, DJ had a question for Kevin. Um, DJ asks, uh, how was the experience in uh, Orlando for you overall, and uh, how have you been able to improve your play, if at all, since your return with the Mayhem? Uh, he also wants to know what it's been like uh, kind of mentoring uh, Cody Porter, who's a younger goaltender, um, while you yourself are also a young netminder uh, coming into the league. Uh, well, my experience in Orlando, <clears throat> they're really great there. I obviously uh, wasn't able to get uh, any playing time which uh, I would have liked and which was kind of my goal when I got there but I was stuck behind a hot goalie <clears throat> but I think the, just the coolest part for me is uh, 
like you see guys that are on like NHL contracts, AHL contracts, and uh, just the, the little detail work that they actually put in. Like they love to get to the rink. Uh, they want to work. They want to get better every day. And I think that's pretty much the main thing that I'm going to take out of it. But uh, to go off uh, Porter there, uh, he's a smart. He's a smart goalie. He loves the game, which is uh, kind of contagious too. Like he's probably a little more analytical than I am, but like he works hard. He has those those little things that he wants to work on. He probably breaks down the game a little more than I do because I kind of just like to feel out the game but Mm -hmm. like overall I think he's a he's a good goalie and like it's fun to work with a guy like that that is hungry for to get better at least and try to help our team win it's got to be I would think the youngest goaltending tandem in the league if not uh you know one of them for sure yeah I'm I'm still up there though 25 so (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys, if there's uh, no other questions, we're going to go ahead and wrap the show up. Uh, I've got one last question before the the trivia question at the end, Um, so just brace yourselves for that. I forgot to bring the puck, um, but whoever answers the trivia question correctly will have a signed puck that you can pick up uh, at any point really throughout the rest of the week. Uh, Our office hours are 9 to 5, and uh, obviously the games. Oh, is Pam going to win it, David? (laughs) Um, Already, Oh, she's got her phone out and ready to go. This may not help you. Oh, the, the programs will not help you. <laughs> Sorry. Because yeah, I know everyone's got that thing memorized by now. <laughs> but, uh, all right, Coach, last question I have for you is the, uh, the Quad City Storm are making their first ever trip to the Macon Centerplex this weekend. Dakota Kletcha is making his return to Macon. Um, are you uh, looking forward to squaring off against him again and facing that team for the first time since last year? Yeah, I mean... Um... You know, I liked Clutch when he was here. He's he's got some grit and some jam to his game, and you know, offensively, he can always be a weapon. So, um, you know, he's a guy after whistles that'll stick you and try to get under your skin a little bit. So, we've got to be aware of that. Um, and then, I mean, they just play hard. Looking at Quad City on film, you know, they're looking at teams' rosters. You know, skill-wise, they're not up there, I think, but. Uh, for 60 minutes, they work hard all over the ice, and that's you know our mentality. Kind of, we have to match that that desperation and that urgency, um, and kind of let our skill you know come off of that. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, only playing them once last year and not getting the result we wanted. It'll it'll be an interesting matchup for sure. Yeah, if I if I remember right, that game ended. In, it was either overtime or a shootout. Uh, overtime. Was it overtime? Yeah. Overtime loss. Yeah, that's right. Up in. Uh, in the Quad Cities, which borders Illinois and Iowa, if I'm not mistaken. So long trip for them. It's going to be exciting. We've never before seen them in this building before, so uh, that'll be pretty neat in and of itself. Plus, we've got the Grinch night again on Friday, uh, Family Four Pack night as well on Friday, and then our Teddy Bear Toss night on Saturday, which uh, kind of segues into the final question of the show, the trivia question, and it is this. Which Mayhem player last season scored the goal which launched the Teddy Bear Toss? Do any of you guys I have know no this? Idea. I feel <laughs> no like I clue. should know, but I don't. <laughs> there you go, Sean. <laughs> Did you know that, or was that a lucky guess? No, you knew. Know. Okay, Mike Chamello. Oh, okay. Yeah, kind oh, of a. Okay. It was a dark horse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I figured people would guess Trask and Seamer, but. All right, guys. Well, uh, again, as always, we really appreciate you coming out. Thanks so much for being here. We uh, hope you've enjoyed your meals tonight, and we hope to see you again next week. It'll be another Wednesday night at the Rookery uh, at 6 p.m. next Wednesday, December 18th. Thanks again so much, guys. Have a good week.